Hello and welcome to Phuket Pals GD Express screencast with me, Teacher Marco. Today's lesson focuses on diagrams on the GD science tests. And uh, the GD science test uses a variety of visual prompts to present information to the test taker. And today we'll try to learn about diagrams, how to read them, and strategies for understanding this information. When we say diagrams, we mean a simplified illustration that demonstrates how a process or structure looks or works. This could mean looking at a diagram of the internal structure of an atom or a diagram of the entire Milky Way galaxy or anything in between. So the test will often use these tools to represent scientific processes and to test your knowledge of those processes. So what do you need to keep in mind when reading diagrams for the GED science test? Uh, first is an important point to remember when taking the GED science test is that for the most part, all of the information you need to know to answer the question is provided to you in the POM. So the science test ends up being more about your ability to properly read and analyze information you're given rather than testing your knowledge of scientific concepts. So don't let diagrams of structures or processes you're not familiar with overwhelm you. Even if you don't recognize the diagram you're shown, you should be able to answer the questions correctly just by analyzing the information in the prompt and or diagram. So let's take a look at some parts of the diagram. Um, I have a question here in the diagram on the right side of your screen. Let's take a look at the labels. So the first thing that you need to do when analyzing a diagram is read all the text that appears in the picture. This text will label the parts and the processes being presented and will help you understand the picture that you're looking at. For instance, let's take a look at the sample diagram and multiple choice question presented in this slide. So uh, here on the right side is a diagram of an atom. And uh, let's take a look at the question. <clears throat> Based on the diagram above, which of the following statement is true about the structure of an atom? A, the nucleus is made of neutrons and electrons. B, the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. C, protons are made up of neutrons and electrons. And D, neutrons are made up of the nucleus and electrons. So the correct answer is B, the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. As you can see, you don't need any prior knowledge of the structure of an atom to answer this question correctly. Just by looking at the image and its labels, you can see that the other answer choices are not supported by the information you're provided. So you have to know how to read the labels. Second thing that you need to know is uh, you must know how to read keys. Um, it will come in handy when analyzing diagrams in the GED science test. For example, let's take a look at the image below and also the question. So let me read the question. Based on the diagram above, which of the following statements about Africa's biomes or, uh, is true? A. North Africa is mostly made up of grasslands. B. Southern Africa is mostly made up of extreme desert. And C. Semi-deserts are usually bordered by grasslands. And D. Extreme deserts are usually bordered by forest. So the correct answer here is C. Some uh, semi-deserts are usually bordered by grasslands. So uh, we can tell this by using the key in the bottom left corner to decipher the information given to us on the map. The key tells us what the colors 
on the map represent and we can use that information to determine which of the answer choices is correct so seeing the grasslands are a light yellow green and that semi deserts are light brown we can determine the answer choice C is true while of the other answers uh, while none of the other answers are actually supported all right so now that we've covered the major features of uh, the test diagrams let's uh, try to talk about um, a few strategies that will keep you or help you approach these prompts so one thing that you have to keep in mind while reviewing diagrams is, is that you will commonly be presented with more information that you need to answer the question. In a lot of cases, uh, there will be a lot of extra information included, and your job will be to sift through and find information you need to answer the question. One effective method for dealing with this is to read the question first, then return to the prompt and identify the key information um, you'll need. This will make your approach more direct and will be more time effective. So if you look at this diagram, it's full of information. So the best thing to do is to go to the question first. Let's take a look. So based on the diagram above, which of the following statements is true about a plant's cell structure? A. The outer layer of the cell is also called a nuclear envelope. B. The nucleus is inside the nucleolus, C mitochondrion and small membrane vesicles serve the same purpose. And D, the cell wall surrounds the entire cell. So the correct answer is D, the cell wall surrounds the entire cell. As you can see, there is a lot of information in this diagram. Uh, but the question only requires us to know a few pieces of it by reading the question first. Um, you can actually narrow down your search rather than trying to read and learn the entire diagram, diagram before proceeding. So let's take a look at another uh, example of diagram, um, a di a diagrams of uh, processes. For some GED science test diagram questions, you'll be presented with an image with that depicts a series of events. And this could include many different processes, including things like weather patterns, food chains, or electrical currents. In order to read these diagrams, uh, let's try to follow the arrows presented, all right, to assess the order of the system being presented. So many students don't actually try to look at where the arrow goes or where the arrow comes from. This is very important when we're dealing with processes. So. Based on the diagram above, let's take a look at the question. Which of the following is true about carbon cycle? A. Fossil fuels and cement production absorb carbon. B. Soil contains no carbon. C. Trees absorb carbon from the atmosphere. And D. When a fire burns, it absorbs carbon from the atmosphere. What do you think is the correct answer here? So, the correct answer, if you take a look at the arrows here, even here. So, the correct answer is C, trees absorb carbon from the atmosphere. By following the arrows on the diagram, we can trace the path of carbon as it goes through the cycle. So by determining the direction of the carbon, uh, the carbon is traveling, we can determine that any object with an arrow moving away from it is a producer of carbon, like the fire and the fossil fuels, um, and that any object with an arrow moving towards it like the trees, so take a look at this arrow here, like the trees, um, absorbs carbon, all right? So uh, those are just a few examples that I presented. 
Um, in conclusion, a diagram is a labeled image that tests your knowledge of the information or processes presented in the picture. To effectively analyze images, make sure to read what? Labels. All right. And uh, also, you have to make sure that you also check the keys, like what we have in this diagram. And also be sure to correctly follow arrows. All right. And uh, when, we're, when we're trying to deal with processes and uh, to manage your time wisely, it could be more effective to read the questions first and then return to the image to look for scientific information. All right. So I think we're done for this screencast. And if you'd like to know more about Phuket Pals, uh, please visit our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Phuket Pals. Or you can call us at 0814170978. That's it. And thank you for your time. Have a nice day.